morning again we start with the personality disorders as per our always request that you have been revising the psychiatry re revising the notes and the lectures again and again because that's what we have been taken a promise that we will revise the topics again and again now we come to the important interesting topic of the personality disorders but before that i would say that let's understand what is the personality we all have learned the you know that personality definition we don't go beyond the psm and i will take it as a definition carry forward from the psm that before we come to the personality disorder we must say what is the personality personality is a persistent pervasive lifestyle of individual by which anybody is known is called as the personality so persistent pervasive lifestyle of individual by which anybody is known is being called as the personality and we all know personality usually forms in adolescent so personality usually forms in adolescents so very close friend of mine who know me from very beginning can predict my behavior because he is knowing me from very beginning personality usually forms in adolescents and we say that no personality is good or bad no personality is good or bad but if causes dysfunction it will be called as disorder so that is the point if we carry these thoughts in our mind we will never make a mistake in a question of the personality and personality disorders that personality is a persistent pervasive lifestyle of individual by which anybody is known and it usually forms an adolescent so very close friend of mine can predict my behavior because he know me from very beginning and we say that no personality is good or bad we will see that there are some very good traits in some personalities but nothing is good or bad in psychiatry anything which causes dysfunction will be called as the disorder okay with this basic dictum we now come to the understanding which has been very popular that five factor theory which has been previously to understand the dimensions of the human you know understanding and personality and psyche popularly known by the name of ocean to remember openness to experience whether the person is inventive versus curious versus consistent and cautious conscientiousness efficient organized versus extravagant and careless extravagant or introversion we all know whether it's outgoing outspoken energetic versus solitary reserved introvert preferring the solitary activity agreeableness whether he is friendly compassionate versus challenging callous so that's a way to appreciate the client and neuroticism neuroticism basically is a sensitive nervous versus resilient confident so these are the five factor theory given in late 60s 90s 60s 70s to understand the human psyche and the personality but that's all about the normal personality there is nothing abnormal about it 
personality disorders we know they have been learned as a introvert extrovert in our medicine also we have learned type a type b and we have seen we have seen the neuroticism and psychosis so this is what we been, been previously practiced we all in english know that people who talk more who have outgoing outspoken parting too much of a confident are extrovert who prefer solitary activity minimal friend does not socialize much it's a introvert anxious ambitious always on their toes prone for some ulcer <clears throat> mi that's a type a cool calm relaxed person is type b neuroticism psychoticism will discuss in detail in a short while because we will not discuss in detail we just will say what is the current nosological structure and to appreciate that we will just add up what they are for today but today in psychiatry in dsm and icd we understand the psychiatry disorders personality disorder into the clusters so we appreciate the personality disorder and structure them in the clusters we say cluster a which is odd and eccentric cluster b which is attention seeking cluster c anxious so this one page should suffice us and we are with a pending understanding of a pending understanding of the neuroticism and psychoticism because we'll appreciate rather than we telling and discussing in detail i would say just will summarize up fit it up here in this basic one page i tell you if you just learn this page if you remember this page one of the personality disorder classification most of the mcqs are in the examination of neat and inict and all the cl uh, clarification will be understood here so we say in this we have the paranoid pd we have the schizoid pd we have the schizotypal pd paranoid schizoid and schizotypal pd we'll discuss in detail one by one here we have the narcissistic pd we have the anti social pd histrionic pd or borderline pd what has been called as the emotionally unstable personality disorder in anxious we have the anxious pd we have dependent pd and we have the anancastic pd or called as the obsessive compulsive pd 
प्लीज माई इट्स ऑब्सेसिव कंपल्सिव पर्सनैलिटी डिसऑर्डर ओके वी लर्न वन बाय वन वी रिटर्न दी पॉइंट लाइक निरोटिसम साइकोटिसम हेयर टू फिनिश ऑफ देयर कंसेप्ट ऑल्सो बिकॉज समटाइम दे आस्क एन एग्जाम वॉट इज निरोटिसम दो इट्स अ लॉन्ग ओल्ड हिस्ट्री बट दे आस्क यू इन यू नो एग्जाम so it's so old but so to appreciate that we say that what has been taught to us as a neuroticism currently been called as cluster c and what was been called as psychoticism in the past in 1970s currently been called as cluster a that means if we appreciate what is cluster a we automatically understand what was psychoticism in 1970s and we if we understand what is cluster c we automatically understand what was neuroticism in 1970s so with this basic one page figure one page as a important backup for us we now learn different clusters 